This episode is an absolute dumpster fire from start to finish. Just when I thought it couldn't get any worse, it does. And the show creators even managed to do something that I thought was impossible. They managed to do something even worse than Ryan Johnson. Also, some of the predictions that I made in my previous videos came true in this episode, which I guess is kind of cool for me. Yay, I got it right. But it's also really pathetic because of how incredibly dumb these events are and just how easy it was to predict them. And I'm sure I'm not the only one. I mean, anyone who was paying attention probably could have seen this stuff coming a mile away. Anyways, this episode begins with a quick recap of what happened with the diversity hire when she was younger and why she was originally taken by the TVA. Immediately, this is just outright stupid. Remember that even though the diversity hire looks like she might be a young girl in these scenes, she's still a frost giant disguised as an Asgardian. They live for thousands of years, which means that they might end up looking younger for a much longer period of time than a normal human would. So this version could be maybe 50 years or 100 years old, but even if that's not the case, it doesn't matter because it's still incredibly stupid and makes no sense. Remember, the TVA will destroy an entire timeline if one person is only 10 minutes late for work. So even assuming the diversity hire was aging like a normal human in the early part of her life, she would only be about 10 in this scene, and that would still mean that she was around for 10 whole years before the TVA decided to come in and just wipe out that timeline. It makes absolutely no sense. As I said previously, this version being female should have resulted in that timeline being removed immediately. For what possible reason would the TVA allow the Nexus event of her creation to continue for at least 10 years, or maybe 50 or 100, whatever it happens to be, it doesn't matter. It's a very long time for them to allow this Nexus event to continue. And the only reason why they didn't go and stop it earlier was because if they had, then the whole idiotic story wouldn't even been possible. All of this story, this entire show, hinges on this incredibly dumb decision by the TVA to allow a Nexus event to last for at least 10 years. It's just dumb. I think the premise of the show is idiotic. So we see that it was Rachel who was responsible for bringing her into the TVA, but because Rachel is utterly incompetent, the diversity hire was able to steal her tablet and escape. And I have to wonder, since we've seen Rachel being utterly incompetent as a judge, and now we've seen her being utterly incompetent as an agent, for what possible reason does she keep getting promoted? Also, there seems to be a pretty clear indication of why this version of Loki was originally taken, and it had nothing to do with her being female for some dumb reason, because the female Loki is inherently good. And remember, the male version of Loki, as we saw explained by Mobius in the previous episode, the male version of Loki is always inherently evil. Why is this? Because when we get that flashback where she's playing with the toys, she is doing some sort of a kind of, you know, a make-believe thing where she is trying to protect Asgard from an evil dragon, right? And then when she gets taken to the TVA headquarters, she sees the other guy and he's in pain, and she's like, someone, please help him. You know, she's completely selfless at that point. Like, she's being taken away from her home. She's being dragged away by these people that she doesn't know. She's in this scary environment, but she is completely selfless, and she's thinking only of that other man who is being hurt or who is in pain. So that is what I'm guessing is going to be the revelation of, of why she became a variant. It had nothing to do with the fact that she was female. It had to do with the fact that she was inherently good. Later on in the episode, she actually gets to talk to Rachel and she asks Rachel, why was I taken by the TVA? What was the Nexus event? And Rachel just kind of smiles and refuses to tell her. And I think this is my prediction here that it's because male Loki inherently bad female version inherently good you gotta be kidding me she was such a strong female woman jumping to the present rachel is visiting the timekeepers we get a quick glimpse of them in this ominous fog filled room hmm it looks a little bit like the setting for the wizard of oz i wonder if that's going to be relevant later it is and it's really dumb <sighs> yeah. 
Later, Mobius approaches Rachel and asks to see the agent that had been mind-controlled by the diversity hire, but Rachel says that it's not possible to go and see her because that woman is dead, and Rachel claims that the mind-control had ended up driving her mad and she couldn't even speak by the end. And then we move over to possibly the dumbest scene that has ever occurred in all of the MCU. Visually, it looks pretty decent, but everything about this next scene is just hilariously awful in every conceivable way. I expect nothing, and I'm still let down. So Loki and the diversity hire are sitting around waiting for everything to end, and they have a little chat. The diversity hire asks him, do you think the fate of all Lokis is for all of us to fail? And then Loki says, no, we may lose, but we never die, we survive. I'm sorry. What? He's dead. Really, Loki? You don't remember this? You don't remember seeing this video like two days ago? This was the entire catalyst for why this version of Loki changed his ways? You don't think that Loki dies? Oh boy. So one of two things is true. Either this Loki is unbelievably stupid, or the writers of the show are unbelievably stupid. My guess is probably both. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. But don't worry, it gets worse, because then Loki spends the next two minutes of his life, which presumably are going to be the last, and he spends it the entire time talking about how amazingly awesome the other diversity hire version is. And then just, she's amazing, and, and he can't believe just how cool she is, and she's just amazing. Th these are the last two minutes of your life, and he's simping for her. Just when I think you couldn't possibly be any dumber. It is so pathetic. It is unbelievable. But then she places her hand on his arm, and this alerts the TVA to something that is an extreme Nexus event. Because up until now, the TVA hasn't been able to locate either of these two because they're an area that's going to be completely and utterly annihilated. But somehow, Loki falling in love with essentially himself causes what is called an extreme Nexus event. He falls in love with himself. After the last episode, I did think that this was a possibility, but then when I was writing my script for my other video, I'm like, no way. I'm like, there's no way they're gonna do this. It's just too dumb. It's so ridiculous. There is no way that they're going to do this, and yet they did. Oh my god, it's it's like, I don't know, do you, do you laugh or do you cry? It is so unbelievably fucking dumb, I can't believe they actually put it into the show. But as absurd as all that is, None of it should matter, and none of it would cause a Nexus event by the own rules that the show has established. I mean, we know that Disney and Marvel just don't care about the rules anymore, but the fact of the matter is they established a set of rules in the first couple episodes where you do stuff before any of these apocalyptic-type events and nothing changes because the entire area is going to be annihilated. So him professing his love or feeling like he's in love isn't going to change anything. It's not going to create a branching timeline because the entire planet is about to be completely and utterly annihilated. It doesn't matter if lonely Loki gets annihilated or in love Loki gets annihilated. It's still going to be gone. It doesn't matter. It's not going to create a branching timeline or anything because it's going to be gone. Like, it doesn't matter. Your own rules in the show indicate that this doesn't matter. It is so stupid. But because Loki <laughs> fell in love with himself... Well, Freud was right. The TVA detects a Nexus event, they open a couple of portals, and the two just stroll out of the planet and into safety. This is why people don't like Deus Ex Machina type events. This is why you should avoid them in storytelling, because it's completely unearned. It's unsatisfying to the audience. Like, wow, they went through all this trouble, and then through the power of love, they get say It's just so dumb. Like, there's nothing, there's no effort here. There's no good resolution to the, to the problem that was currently occurring. It's, it's just, it's a joke. 
It's just so dumb, and it's a joke. The right is a utter trash. But don't worry, it gets worse. The two are taken to the TVA where they're separated, and just in case you weren't sure if the show creators hate men, this scene will perfectly capture that. Because the diversity hire gets a bunch more guards because she is, quote, far more dangerous, and then Loki complains that it's not fair, that he should be treated the same, and this and that, and whatever. This is woke writing 101. I've talked about this in previous episodes. The women in this woke writing are always treated as better, stronger, more dangerous, the blah, blah, blah. And the white guy is just going to complain and he needs to be put in his place and all of that sort of garbage. It's unbelievably sexist and would never, ever be allowed if it was the opposite. But of course, remember, doing it this way is the good kind of sexism or something. You're saying it's a woman's game because women are weak and need more help. Yes. But don't worry, it gets worse because then Loki is thrown into some kind of a time cell that's on a loop where the events just keep repeating. And inside the room, he's approached by the lady Sif, who's angry that Loki had cut her hair when she was sleeping or something. So she yells at him and then proceeds to beat him up. Are you seeing a pattern here? But don't worry, it gets worse. It gets so much worse. Mobius visits Rachel and begs her to allow him to do his job. He wants to interview the diversity hire to find out what was going on, and Rachel just flatly refuses, and she speaks to him in the most condescending manner possible, as if he was just a stupid child. And then back with Loki in the time cell, during one of the loops, he stops and apologizes to Lady Sif, and then he begins groveling and begging for forgiveness, and saying how much of a pathetic loser he is, and he admits to being a narcissist, and then he's lonely, and he's worthless, and he only wants attention. Are you seeing a pattern here? There are not noses large enough for this to actually fit upon them. This is so on the nose. Mobius pulls him out to question him, and Loki tries to make up a story about how he's the one in charge, and he's just going to get rid of the diversity hire when everything is over. Of course, he's doing this in order to cover for her because he loves himself, which is so stupid. It's so dumb. Mobius doesn't believe any of this for a second, and he then claims that the diversity hire has already been purged. She's already been disintegrated. And Loki starts to cry, and Mobius makes fun of Loki for having some sort of weird, twisted infatuation with a different version of himself, which coincidentally is exactly how every normal person reacted in that previous scene when they saw Loki falling in love with himself. Because only woke weirdos on social media think that having a relationship with yourself is somehow anywhere close to normal behavior. But of course, Mobius is just a white guy, and of course he's wrong, so later he'll change his ways and give his pseudo-blessing to all of this absurdity. Loki then tries to tell Mobius the truth, that everyone in the TVA is a variant, but Mobius doesn't believe it, and throws Loki back into the time cell where, again, he is repeatedly beaten up by the woman. That is one big pile of shit. They're not even trying to hide the man-hating in this episode. <laughs> Regardless, Sassy Black Lady is now beginning to remember stuff from her past because of that enchantment she was under, so she goes to visit the diversity hire in her cell and takes her through a portal. She then gets told the truth that she is a variant, just like everyone else in the TVA, and the diversity hire uses her magic to unlock the rest of her memories. Now, remember, the diversity hire has the collar around her neck, which completely removes all of her ability to use magic, and yet she can still use magic while the collar is on because the plot needs it to happen. But we never actually get to see what happens with the sassy black lady's memories. We don't get a flashback or it doesn't cut away to any other kind of scene or nothing. I guess Disney just didn't want to spend the money on it. <laughs> Who knows? But all we get is just like a little close up of her face. And then she says, I remember I was happy. And then that's basically it. That's disappointing. Mobius is back in Rachel's office signing some paperwork about the closing of the case, and again he asks about the diversity hire and that other agent who had been mind-controlled, but Rachel just doesn't want to talk about it. It's clear that Mobius is getting suspicious of her, so when she turns her back, he swaps out his time tablet for hers. After leaving the office, he investigates the tablet and finds a recording of that agent who had been mind-controlled talking about all of her previous memories as she's being questioned by Rachel. 
and this reveals the truth to Mobius that everyone at the TVA is a variant. It also once again proves that Rachel is utterly incompetent and stupid because she left the recording on her tablet. Mobius goes to visit Loki in the time cell where he is still being repeatedly beat up by a woman just in case all of that wasn't crystal clear to you already. Mobius then says that he believes the Nexus event that was caused by Loki falling in love with himself was powerful enough to bring down the entire TVA. My emotions! My emotions! They agree to work together, but as soon as they leave the time cell, they're met with Rachel and several of the guards. She confronts him about the stolen tablet and orders a guard to disintegrate him. Mobius doesn't even try to fight back. He doesn't try to dodge it or nothing. He just stands there like a bitch. Of course, Loki couldn't do anything because Mobius was too stupid to remove his collar. The two of them were about to confront the TVA. They agreed to work together. At this point, it was clear that Mobius had complete trust in Loki. Why would he leave his collar on? Oh, right, I know why. Because otherwise the plot couldn't happen because bad writing. So then Loki and the diversity hire are taken to meet the timekeepers who immediately ordered the deletion of both of them. But suddenly, sassy black lady arrives and unlocks both their collars, which is something that Mobius should have done already. But do you remember the throne room fight from The Last Jedi? Do you remember how unbelievably bad it was? The hilariously pathetic choreography, the bad guys standing around waiting to attack one at a time. Some of the bad guys deliberately missing because the main actors were missing their cues. Well, this is just like that but worse. Are you serious? It's really hard to believe that Ryan Johnson is now responsible for only the second worst throne room fight scene of all time. Up until now, the glow stick rods used by the TVA had only one dangerous end that would disintegrate someone. The other part was just, it was a blunt thing. It was just like a rod, like a stick. However, the ones that are used with these guards now, for some magical reason, have a sharp pointy end on the other side as well. And the reason for that is to create a whole bunch of fake tension within this fight. Because during the fight, the Lokis and Rachel all get hit with these rods several times, but it's always the sharp end. Coincidence? I think not! The fight is being very obviously dragged out because everyone in the room is just too stupid to use the part of the weapon that would instantly disintegrate the opponent at the slightest touch, but instead, they use the part that causes a tiny, inconvenient cut. Just a flesh wound. Especially this guy right here. Look it! He's on the ground, he could easily just kind of like, turn the rod a little bit and like, zap Loki in the leg and that would be it, everything would be done. But no, he doesn't. He just sits there kind of wobbling around on the stairs. Also, it bears mentioning that during the fight, the camera is almost entirely focused on the two female characters, whereas Loki, who is supposed to be the star of the show, is pushed to the background. <laughs> and also, don't forget that this entire situation is utter nonsense to begin with, because even if magic is being restricted within the TVA headquarters, both of these Lokis are frost giants with superhuman strength. The guards are just normal people. They're regular humans. This fight should have been over in less than three seconds. A single hit from either of the Lokis would have instantly killed any of these guards. It's completely absurd that Loki was struggling versus two normal humans. None of it makes any sense. In the end, all the guards get killed, but of course, Rachel being a main character is just knocked out, which is going to be really important in about a minute. Then the diversity hire gets mad at the timekeeper. She throws her sword, revealing that they were all fake and nothing more than robots. This is the Wizard of Oz, there's someone else behind the scenes pulling the strings kind of nonsense. I talked about this in a previous video. I'm not even patting myself on the back with this one because it was so unbelievably pathetically obvious and predictable. I don't know if the show creators thought they were being clever with all this, but I saw it a mile away, and I know a lot of other people probably did too. It's just all dumb. I was right. Note the lack of surprise. Anyways, Loki decides that this would be a great opportunity for him to express whatever weirdo feelings that he has for the diversity hire 
But before he can get the words out, Rachel pops up behind him and disintegrates him. And nothing of value was lost. Diversity Hire then instantly disarms Rachel and demands to know the truth. But the episode doesn't end right there, though, as there is a post credit scene. And in that scene, Loki awakens on the ground in some kind of a destroyed city. He is greeted by strange versions of Loki and what appears to be a black Thor using a very homemade looking hammer. And this reveals that the disintegration tools don't really destroy the person. Instead, it's more of a transportation device of some kind, which I can't help but think is pretty funny about the TVA guards that just got taken out in that previous scene. Because if Loki had zapped them with the stick, then they would still be alive because they just would have been teleported away. But since Loki and Diversity Hire decided to stab everyone, then they're all actually fully dead. So they would have been better off getting hit with the glow stick and getting teleported away. But hey, I guess not. Too bad for you. As a refresher, the comic book version of Rachel is called Ravona Renslayer, and she was in a relationship with someone called Kang the Conqueror. He's the biggest time travel villain in all of Marvel, and he's already supposed to be in the next Ant-Man movie. Or I guess I should say the next Wasp movie, since Ant-Man is already getting cucked out of his own franchise. But regardless, it does seem clear that Rachel is now working with Kang the Conqueror, and the TVA is one of his schemes to control all of time. Rachel will probably end up being the villain for the rest of the season, and Kang will only get teased in the last episode, and then he'll show up as the main villain in most of the MCU movies for the next phase. This show is 99% boring garbage, with people just sitting and talking and sitting and talking, and when they finally do fight scenes, it's some of the worst CW Batwoman level stuff possible. The show is absolute, complete, and utter garbage, but thankfully it's almost over. And that's the end of episode four.